we are checking the changes in the market price over time. So it is now a dynamic analysis. Let us start with the very basic static concept of market price which is based on a very famous microeconomic model in which we had demand and supply equations. You know that this is the demand equation and this is the supply equation uh, alpha, beta, delta and gamma. All of these are parameters and they are positive here. However, these signs they make their own interpretations as we will go ahead uh, and we will see that how they can be simplified. But just to remind ourselves this negative sign shows that there is a negative relationship of price and quantity demanded. And this negative sign shows a negative intercept of the supply curve. This is the gamma and since it has entered into the negative quadrant it is now a negative intercept. So after making sense of these parameters we go ahead and we try to find out the static equilibrium and in the static sense we simply have to equate the quantity demanded and quantity supplied and uh, once we equate them we can put their values as you can see the value of QD is substituted and the value of QS is also substituted. Now we can extract the value of the only variable in this equation and that only variable is price. So price is kept on the right hand side those uh, values that contain the variable P and on the left hand side we have the constants. Taking P as a common variable we get this expression and now P is kept on the right hand side and beta plus delta is shifted to the other side. So in other words making a mirror image we have the value of price that is the equilibrium price and it is alpha plus gamma divided by beta plus delta. So we can interpret this outcome and the interpretation should be parametric because there are parameters involved in this that is alpha, beta, delta and gamma. As we are already told above that all of these are positive values as you can see these are already informed about that they are positive values and therefore when we solve them in this expression where there is only positive sign and division and there is no negative sign the answer of this expression will always be a positive value because there is no sign and there will be no subtraction giving us any negative sign. We can experiment this by assuming various values, various positive values of alpha, beta, delta and gamma. Now after assuming these values uh, we can substitute them and get an answer which is likely to be a constant and a positive one. Greater than zero means that it's going to be a positive answer and from the economic point of view we can make sense of it because price in the real world is a positive value. We always pay something to get uh, something. We cannot have a value which is um, price value which is negative. We always have to pay something as a price is paid. Now let's talk about the dynamic sense because actually we are studying the dynamic uh, side of the equilibrium and for that we start with the static sense that is the um, static equilibrium that we just obtained. It is the starting point and using this we can build the dynamic sense of the equilibrium. You know that in dynamic analysis we have a time path that is the dependent variable depends over time that is the dependent variable depends on time as I have made this simple graph time and in this case the price the equilibrium price is dependent upon the variable time so if we can make this we can say that we have done some dynamic analysis of the equilibrium price so it's not just limited to one equilibrium value it is now going to be a series of equilibrium values 
now remembering the concept of time path that it has two components one is the complementary part other is the equilibrium part or the particular integral we have modified the given formula by replacing p with y as you can see there is no general y variable now we have an economic variable price here as well as here as well as in the place of the dependent variable so it is the time path of price and it is the sum of the complementary function of price and the particular integral of the price variable going ahead we have substituted this p and small p with p asterisk because we have the e static equilibrium value of price and we can easily substitute it here so instead of writing a general notation of particular integral of price variable we are using the value that we just found a little while earlier as you can see p asterisk is equal to alpha plus gamma divided by beta plus delta so these uh, uh, substitution will lead us to this expression which is now to be used from this point now once we talk about the um, time path there are possibilities of its initial condition we have to see from where the time path can start there can be three possibilities broadly speaking uh, let us come to it one is that the uh, the time path starts from above the equilibrium or at the equilibrium or below the equilibrium so these three possibilities are there that the initial condition or the starting point of the time path can start from either of these points for instance if this is the equilibrium p asterisk then the time path can start either from above or at the equilibrium price or below the equilibrium price so we have this uh, set of possibilities these are three possibilities that can exist in case of uh, this uh, dynamic analysis of equilibrium price now this is a detailed diagram of what we just saw and definitely it is more elaborated as we will see uh, I'll just uh, show you this whole diagram in one uh, scroll and then we will divide it into uh, two or three parts as you can see on x-axis we have the time variable which makes sense because it is time um, based analysis dynamic analysis and on y-axis we have PT that is the time path of price now equilibrium P status is the notation and we are assuming that equilibrium occurs at price 50 it is a constant value as you saw that in the formula that we developed was showing that there would be some constant value as at the top of the slide you can see there will be a constant answer of it which will be positive and here you can see it is positive it is 50 now the equilib uh, the time path can start either from above which is 90 for example it is starting from 90 and uh, we are going ahead uh, with its movement as you can see its movement is um, uh, going downwards as you can see this red line is guiding us about how it is going to move and in this case it is going down uh, this is one of the good possibilities but it's not necessary that in every environment it, this will happen so we are assuming that it is happening in this way and it is a favorable case of convergence as you have already understood uh, before that how convergence takes place when it comes to the time path now I can label it as PT this line that we have been talking about and it is going close to the equilibrium 
here there is a little bit of elaboration of how it is happening uh, the initial price is greater than the equilibrium price that is 90 is greater than 50 and we have started from above the equilibrium which is definitely visible that equilibrium is here and the um, initial starting point or initial condition is at 90 which is above and now again the same comparison is written as you know that the disparity or the difference between the two is the deviation and you can see that this deviation is uh, you know now highlighted because this is the equilibrium and the curve above is the time path so there is a disparity that you can see and that disparity is the deviation from equilibrium we have already studied this before and it was called YC but here we have a certain variable price so we are calling it PC that is the complementary function for equilibrium price so this is one possibility but you know that there are three possibilities the second one is when the initial price is at equilibrium that is it is here at this very point and the movement will be here that is it will remain on this path so as we can see that we have already started from the equilibrium point there is no need for adjustment over time because the initial price is 50 as well as the equilibrium is 50 so adjustments they are not needed and the deviation in this case will be equal to 0 which is a very good thing because in this case the time path will be at equilibrium so there is no complementary function there is no deviation and we are at the cherished point of equilibrium now the third possibility was definitely that we start from below the equilibrium and it can be understood keeping the above situation in our mind you can see that it is just the mirror image of what we have seen before nothing significantly different if we try to focus on the two diagrams at the same two parts of the diagram we can see that it is not very much different again this is deviation if this was the starting point here we have this starting point which is definitely below the equilibrium and uh, it it goes in a direction which is getting close to the equilibrium it is represented by PT and the deviation here is highlighted again it is decreasing over time which is a good thing and in this case the initial price is less than the equilibrium price so adjustment is required because for uh, 10 to reach the level of 50 definitely some adjustment is required and uh, luckily it is happening in this case that the deviation is happening and you must remember that convergence takes place when the exponential part of the time path is having a negative value that is the value here is a negative one in this case here the negative sign shows that the value will be showing an exponential decay so exponential decay is in the background of this convergence which is taking place it can be exponential growth for that I want you to think over it and see that how the exponential growth diagram will be developed <coughs> 